Are you looking to undertake a townhouse development project, but you're unsure how overshadowing neighbours might affect your project's overall outcome? Well, stick around because in this video, I'm going to share everything that you need to know when it comes to overshadowing your neighbours. Let's get into it. Hey guys, Peter Kelly here from Little Fish Property Developments, helping you maximize the value of your land and generate wealth through low risk residential development projects. We share everything you need to deliver successful projects time and time again. So if you're new around here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn the bell notifications on so you don't get left behind. The implications of overshadowing your neighbors when designing your townhouses are one of those things that don't get talked about enough. The first thing you need to consider is your site's orientation. This will have the most significant impact on the shadowing that you'll be projecting onto your neighbors and potentially onto your own private open space, which in turn may restrict what you can or can't achieve with your design. So there are many rules and restrictions around not shadowing your neighbor's habitable windows or specific percentages of shadowing their private open space. There are even restrictions around shadowing your neighbor's solar panels. There is a reason why north facing private open space properties are popular and command a premium. They maximize the natural light into your living spaces where the light is most valuable. This orientation minimizes the chance of your new design shadowing anyone else northern solar access. Here at Little Fish, when we are looking to identify a suitable development site, one of the critical boxes that we need to tick is determining what neighbor that we have to the south and how this is going to affect our design. We must know this because there will be constraints around shadowing their dwellings, habitable rooms, private open space, and their solar panels. Ideally, what we are looking for if we have a direct neighbor to the south is that there is a nice separation between their dwelling and our boundary. For for example, there may be a driveway on that side separating our site and their habitable rooms. Also, something that is important to be aware of that shadowing is measured as a percentage. So when we are looking to develop a site next to a property with one dwelling, you'll typically be shadowing their backyard. But if you are developing next to a townhouse with a small backyard, it won't take much to not comply with the overshadowing regulations. It can make it very difficult to achieve much on your first floor if there is a small private open space in the proximity, especially to your south. Another thing worth mentioning is how shadowing is calculated and presented in your town planning application. When submitting your application, several standard requirements need to be met. You will need to provide a plan with shadow diagrams showing where shadows will fall at specific times of the day. The shadow diagrams must be shown on a separate plan for 9am, 12 noon and 12pm on September the 22nd, which is the equinox. They must include the shadow cast and you need Need to show the difference between the existing shadows and the proposed shadows. As always, we advise liaising with professionals such as your town planner and your designer. These guys will be best positioned to advise you on overshadowing requirements and ensure that your proposed design complies. Finally, before we wrap up, I want to mention the importance of site orientation again when you are actively searching for your next site to develop. It is something that gets overlooked and undervalued way more than it should. The number of variables it affects is significant and can absolutely absolutely negatively impact your bottom line. That's it guys, that's a wrap. Hopefully you're getting a ton of value from these training videos. We love making them. So please, if you have any questions or topics, please drop them in the comments box below. And of course, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and turn the bell notifications on so you don't get left behind. Thanks guys, I'm Peter Kelly, and until next time, happy developing.